So, Martin, thank you so much for taking the time yeah, to speak to us. Um, so we're now here at the end of March and it's been a challenging start to the year. Yeah. Um, lots of things going on on the client side, lots of big global businesses, um, reviews going on at the moment as well. What is the state of the industry? How's, how's the health of the I industry knew. at the moment? No, I, th I think, look, the industry is going through, and you can analyze this to death, and probably at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't matter, I suppose, how you analyze it, but you can, you can overdo it. Uh, basically, there's long-term structural change driven by technology, technological disruption. And then there are some short-term pressures uh, driven by cheap interest rate or low interest rates. They're going up, but they're still a long way from where they were before, and you have short-term pressures. So you put the two together, it's almost a perfect storm. So you have to deal with it and you have to change the way you do business, change your priorities, probably you know, our case simplify our business, uh, simplify the ver verticals and add what we've been doing for years, I mean nothing new in this, uh, at a country level and at a client level and then what is more and more new is, is adding these slices of technology and data across the whole of the enterprise. So in addition, you know, conventionally you'd have finance, procurement, talent, probably in the opposite order, talent, finance, procurement, as being the sort of underpinning for the verticals. Uh, you add the client, you add the country, and then you add these, these layers of expertise around pretty much digital and data. Uh, you know, we've started with Hogarth, which is now a platform, a digital asset management platform available to the whole of our businesses. And the same thing, all of our verticals, and the same thing applies to digital and to data. So I think, you know, that trying to simplify it uh, as best I can, that's the structural response to the long-term structural and uh, short-term pressures that we have. Uh, obviously, the recent controversies surrounding uh, the online tech companies, as they would call it, I think I call them online media companies, uh, have brought into sharp relief the issues that uh, both Keith Weed and Mark Pritchard talked about. Keith Weed with his three Vs of value, viewability, and validation. Um, Mark Pritchard with his speech uh, a few days ago. You know, have have sent ripples around the industry, or not ripples, I mean waves around the industry, in terms of um, how we should adapt and change. But basically the, the, the clients' businesses have, are changing so much they require not only a new model for themselves, but a new model for ourselves too. So it's trying to marry those two that's critically important. And what sort of questions are clients asking at the moment? The, the most common question is, you know, what's, what's, what's the agency of the future look like? Um, um, I think that's the continue. I don't know whether they met in an enclave in the Vatican somewhere, or uh, but that seems to be the common question. You know, what what structure should we have? Uh, and I think when when the short term pressures um, come, what tends to happen is that's a referred pain. It's referred outside the organisation, the client organisation, to the suppliers. As sometimes we're insisted on on being called or vendors um, rather than partners. Um, so sometimes that, that pressure is transferred. But ultimately what has to happen is both client and agency have to change their structures. And some of these issues, um, have they're, they're not new. We've been hearing them for a while. They, they, well, they've, they've come... So you have the structural change and you have these short-term issues which have exacerbated it. They've speeded it up. Because if you went, you know, it, if we went back to 2009, which was a very tough year, um, you know, our light for light revenue is down 8%. Um, and then the following year, we saw a, a sort of V-shaped recovery in 2010, and then records in 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17, you know, we, we were flat. So we got, went from top line growth to 3%, 3% plus, net, net net sales um, and on a constant currency like-for-like -like basis. 
Um, and that slowed maybe fourth quarter of 16, but I think it really was, it started to be noticeable in the second quarter of 17. So you've had sort of nine months um, that have been sort of flat for us, both at a top line and a bottom line basis, which, you know, if you compare it to the performance of others, it hasn't been that bad, but uh, not up to our usual standard. And I think that's a reflection of those two sets of changes that I have seen. But it, I would say that the, the, the pressure is intensified in the last nine months. Okay, I was going to say the pressure is being felt by all of the holding companies. Uh, yeah, I mean, whether you call them holding companies or not. And, and it, it, it's the interesting thing is it's across the board geographically. I mean, there's not um, the sort of things that the packaged goods companies have had to deal with in particular, which is, you know, in most of our competitors about you know, 20, 25 percent of their, their business, 25, 30 percent, in our case, 30 percent. Um, the packaged goods companies in particular felt the pressure and, and that, that would be true for their operations in Asia just as much as it was true for their operations in the US or Latin America or Europe. Historically, has the industry um, mirrored the economic growth that we've seen? In well, it, there's a disconnect now, in, in, I would say, in the mature markets between GDP growth and advertising growth. Um, you know, if, if you just take this year as an example, um, GDP is forecast to be at the north end of 3 to 4 percent. WPP's GDP is different to the worldwide GDP because although we're very strong in Asia and Latin America, we're under-indexed, whereas we're over-indexed in the US and Western Europe. So our GDP would grow a little bit more slowly in that, let's say, 3%. Um, because of the disconnect, it used to be that advertising would grow at the same level of GDP growth. It seems now to be a disconnect in the mature markets, not the faster growth markets like where we are at the moment. Um, but generally, that seems to have broken down in the mature markets, you know, whether that's because of Google and Facebook, whether that's because of consultants, whether that's because of uh, any other phenomenon is another question, but it does seem to have uh, become an issue. So we felt more, more confident if we went in 2018 with zero top line growth and maintained margins rather than, than make any, any more extravagant claims, particularly at this point, point of the year. I mean, you know, the, the year has started off reasonably well. So I, I you know, particularly in this part of the world. Um, so I, I think, and that's what our budgets reflect, by the way, that we'll do better in the so-called fast growth markets and the faster growth disciplines of media and digital um, in particular. Um, but, but having said that, uh, you know, it's still conditions are different to what they were um, a couple of years ago. Okay. 